Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Natalie Aarts from the Sound Lovers about their classic Surrender. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. Alright, here it is, the story behind Surrender by the Sound Lovers, my interview with Natalie Aarts. Enjoy! Natalie Aarts is a Dutch singer-songwriter who lives in Italy for many years already. She is mostly known as the singer of the Sound Lovers, for which she did the vocals on tracks such as Runaway, People, Walking, Living in Your Head and many others. In my previous interview with Natalie, we already spoke about the story behind the Sound Lovers debut track Runaway, but for this week's vlog I did ask her to share the story behind the track Surrender. Natalie is born in Breda, a city in the south of the Netherlands, which has about 150,000 inhabitants. Many famous musicians were born in Breda, for example Tiesto, Hartwell, Funkerman, Rehab, Danik, Cor Feyneman, singer Laura Janssen and even the old manager of Elvis Presley, Colonel Tom Parker. So my first question to Natalie was if she ever met some of them in person. No, not personally. We also had Vader Abraham. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, I never met anybody personally, unfortunately, because I know Tiesto, Tiesto is from my Thais is from my year, the same year, but we, we did different schools, so I never met him. Uh, no, actually I didn't, but obviously I know about them and um, I did hear a lot about them. Mm -hmm. So what is the secret of Breda? Why do so many talented musicians come from Breda? I don't have any idea, but it's a very central city of the Benelux and there's a lot happening because it's years that they organize also a jazz festival. There's a lot of, uh, there's always been a lot of, um, uh, you know, discotheque life and, uh, but what is the secret? It's just a nice city, yeah, nice yeah. people. That, that, it's a really pretty city. That's yeah, it is, it is. Yeah. So yeah, for this interview, we're going to talk about the Sound Lovers track Surrender, a track that turns 25 this year. Uh, first things first, do you still remember how Surrender was born? Uh, well, not really. I was still working at the record company. I knew that they said, oh, we have another song ready. Uh, we have to record. And I went record. I did remember, I do remember the recording very well because I went into the studio in Corso Buenos Aires in Milan where uh, the studio of Filippo Carmeni, Phil, Phil J was, and he put me in this box where, you know, with all those things that you can, you can do your song. And I remember that he would put the, the, this were the lyrics and this, because the lyrics were there already. And I was like, well, well can, can I change something about it? But anyway, we left it like that. And then the music started and they say, we're gonna have, we're gonna, we go, we're going downstairs. I don't know if they had a beer or something. So I actually stayed up in that studio <laughs> singing this song. And maybe you can hear, it was just recorded in blocks, you know, they, they put it all together like this. There was not much edit. Mm -hmm. So now you elaborate songs very much, but that song was just recorded like this. And I, it's fun because that radio edit was called the Birretta edit. And everybody was like, "Where? why Birretta? And I said, I think that while I was singing, they were drinking their little beer and a little beer is birra birretta so birretta makes it because they were drinking and i was working <laughs> well that's actually funny see i i love nerdy things like this <laughs> yeah so yeah the, the when you recorded the vocals was the the, the track completely finished already or was it still like a bit of a demo no it was a demo and then after obviously they started working on the final version yeah is that how you guys you, you used to work for the tracks uh well I have to be honest, Robbie Santini is such a, mel such a melody writer and, and usually the ideas are already very much formed when they get there. It's more a thing like uh, the arrangement, that is going to, the rest, the, the melody, the, um, it's already there. But the, the only thing we do is like maybe we change a bit of the structure, uh, we add, obviously, music drops and things but it's uh they they work they worked really quick mm -hmm. it was really quick always because the song was the idea was there already yeah so i'm just thinking like 
usually was just like one song that you have to record or for example for the album maybe you did like three songs oh, in one day no the album was like uh, yeah a few days i was working obviously in the studio in my uh, in my office and then i would go to this studio and i would just sing like yeah about three or four, four songs all together because the polygram was very much in a hurry with that album yeah, yeah. and they they didn't give us much time i think we had one month mm -hmm. to finish the whole album oh wow yeah <laughs> I can imagine, especially also for the producers, that must have been a bit... Oh, it would be very stressful, yes, yeah. very yeah. stressful. So yeah, the, was the recording of the vocals from Surrender like much different compared to Runaway? Maybe it was like a year since you guys did a few tracks as Salt Lovers already? Yeah, probably yes, because uh, obviously Runaway was this vocal session and I was asked to sing in a in a certain way, like very flat and no mm -hmm. vibrating. And But Surrender is more like, uh, just sing it, try to make it sound like sound lovers uh but you can i could sing a bit more free yeah, yeah. Me, a bit more myself i guess you enjoy that more yeah of yeah. course yeah. yeah do you know how long the producers usually used to work like on a track yeah i think that depends a bit from the song but maybe maybe a week not too much yeah. not too, they were all living in milan mm -hmm. uh with surrender we had Gianni fontana who already moved um, he had that recording studio in New York. I think he's going to Colombia now, but he had actually moved to New York and opened his own recording studio there. So Surrender is not involved in Gianni Fontana, but we were still Monella Phil J, who were also the producers of Gala. Mm -hmm. So we were actually very busy because it's not only the Sound Lovers thing, they were recording also the album of uh, Gala uh, coming to my life. And I was working on that album because I was working at the record company mm -hmm. to do the licensing, you do the artwork, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a crazy, a crazy, a crazy time. Yeah, like was it? A real crazy time. Yeah, like Free From Desire was like huge. I was at the Medium in Cannes uh, in 97, in January. It was crazy because the whole world was like knocking on our door for that song Free From Desire. Oh, wow. We, we didn't sleep, I think, for months. It was crazy, crazy, crazy. Really, uh, very stressful. It's funny, I'm not really that much into football, but there's like this English team, and I think that's like a player, and the, the melody, they, they use it like... The, the, the but they, 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 it's now in every stadium. Yeah, yeah. If you go, uh, they all put free from this, uh, yeah. it's, oh, it's purely on fire, like in Italy. Yeah. What, they always put like a twan is on fire. <laughs> it's it's that's what it is now. It's yeah. it's it's crazy. It went viral. It's, the, the track is from ninety seven. Ninety six. Oh, ninety six. Ninety yeah. six. Oh, wow. Everyone has inside was ninety five. Freak from Desire ninety six. And then after we got let a boy cry coming yeah. to that, and that was the 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 album was released in ninety seven. Yeah. Ah, cool. Um, yeah. So surrender was a bit more commercial compared to the previous releases. Uh, that was, a, I guess, a good decision. Since after the release, uh, it ended up at the number one position of the charts in Italy. Yeah. Uh, do you recall when you found out you guys had like a number one hit in Italy? Yeah, it was a bit weird because um, actually we had all kinds of radio stations already playing the song since the 20th of se September when it was released in 98. Um, but there was one radio missing, that was Radio DJ, which was uh, very much, yeah, I mean, that was the radio that people would listen to, because it's national, it's mm -hmm. not local, it's completely national. So what happened? Um, even if Molella was working for Radio DJ, it, I mean, that wasn't a reason why a song would go on the radio. They were not convinced about the song, but everybody was playing it and it went completely nuts like in, in in the discotheques and the, the djs playing the song people went crazy for that song so in the end in november also radio djs started playing the song and then in december we went number one everywhere mm -hmm. and i think it stayed for almost like four months all together because being a bit late radio dj we hit the number one before in other radio stations, then mm -hmm. Radio DJ a little bit later. So that that uh, sales list, yeah. actually, we, we stayed on number one for such a long time. Uh, it was actually incredible. Good for, it was good for the lifespan of the track. For us, yes. It, in the beginning, we were a bit like disappointed because nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. And then just an explosion. Yeah. It was incredible. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
So uh, which other countries did Surrender make it into the charts? A bit everywhere, because they, they, they're they not very clear in writing, but I think we, we really came everywhere, not everywhere in Europe. Why? Because Polygram was taken over by Universal at the time in 97. It took ages. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we decided to uh, get the rights back from old Polygram because nothing was happening. Yeah, we want we wanted to go on. Yeah, you want to move on. We wanted to move on. So Surrender was actually again do it yourself, not Polygram, which was uh, released and um, licensed to a lot of countries. Uh, the ones missing were actually Holland, Belgium, the northern country like England, the northern countries. But when you go still to Russia, mm -hmm. East Bloc countries, the South. Uh, like Spain, uh, Cyprus, Greece, everywhere, uh, it was number one. Yeah. And we did travel to, you know, Latin America, America still with that Polish guy. So we did do some states, uh, but it's uh, it was very particular. It was everywhere except North, like no, says, like West Europe. Mm -hmm. Really fun, yeah. strange. They know the song because they go on holiday, uh, maybe in France, in, in Spain, in Italy, and they or Greece, yeah. and they all know the song. Because when I went to Ibiza, to the Hard Rock Hotel, or to Tenerife, it was full of Germans, Dutchies, uh, the people from France, there were people from Russia, and they all knew the songs, yeah. all of them. Yeah, I know that back in the day, that this was, this was what was happening, you know, like people that went on holidays in Spain or Italy or whatever, and yeah. they came back and they're like, oh, this is this is the summer yeah. track. And the hits from and, that. And, that, and then like a month or two months later, it became a hit like in the Netherlands. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it was, there was no internet back then. But Surrender was still, uh, well, it, it was still a bit with Universal, Polygram, and they did not decide whether they wanted to use it, yes or no, mm -hmm. but then they didn't, yeah. and we took it. But then time passes and, you know, uh, that is a shame for me because obviously being from Holland, I was a bit sad about that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So yeah, uh, what did happen after the success of Surrender? I guess like lots of interviews, TV shows and gigs? Uh, very much. Yeah. The, well, the problem was also this. In 98, Surrender became a big hit also in Italy, but so much that I was working in my office and uh, I do contracts and licensing. That means I did the license. For example, I I worked on having Miranda Vamos a la Playa for Italy. We had Paradiso for Italy. And because I was Dutch, I could speak Flemish to everybody. And uh, But that's hard working. You have to, people have to trust you and you have to represent that song for your country. But I was so busy also doing radio shows, gigs, uh, but that was in the weekends. You know, promotion, they would send me out for like from Monday to Friday to go to Poland and then from there you would fly to Chicago from there you fly to Vienna and on the I mean on Monday Budapest I remember on the Sunday and I remember that on Monday morning I arrived in Lenat and my bicycle was there and my baggy my bag my on that bicycle going to the office and I thought oh my god can I cope with this can I do this it's <laughs> I was young, but I'm still, you know. Yeah, you need your sleep. <laughs> oh, I need to go to bed. And I thought, oh, I don't know how how long we can go on with this. So I actually had to fire myself. So I had to say, listen, I have to make a choice. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Do I stay the singer of the Sound Lovers or do I stay in the office? I can't do it both. Mm -hmm. So I actually had to say bye bye in May 99. And then I stopped working there on the 31st of July of 99. But I, I it was my last day, but it was very, it was painful. Mm -hmm. it, it, I suffered two years from that because yeah. I, it, it felt a bit like a baby, you know, when you when you do all that gala and Carolina Marquez, Regina, Sound Lovers, you do all that promoting. It's like every little, every song is a bit of your baby. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was like leaving my 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 children behind. Yeah. It was really funny, and for a Dutchie leaving. You know, a job, a stable job for something that you don't know how long it's going to last and how much you will earn. Mm -hmm. But it was just uh, nobody wanted me to stop with the sound lovers of mm -hmm. because yeah. that would just went on, went on. So why are we not? <laughs> I guess you don't have any regrets, right? No, no, because I was still also had that gospel choir. I had that band. Mm -hmm. I did do all my shows as the sound lovers, sometimes even, you know, singing the Happy Men uh, tracks. So I mean, I had fun. I had more time. For, I had more time for myself. Yeah, yeah. 
So yeah, since uh, Surrender turns 25 this year, uh, are there any plans for the 25th anniversary? I don't have any idea. I'm trying to convince them, uh, but I'm not sure the record company would have to do something. Maybe it's also complicated because we had do-it-yourself and now it's do-it-yourself multimedia management. We had a different company. The company changed. So partners changed. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that is very easy yeah, yeah. for them to organize. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if something's going to happen. You are still young, so yeah, let's see. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, 10 years ago since we last heard a new song from the Sao Lovers. Uh, in 2013, the track Be My Man got released. Uh, do you think we can ever expect new material from the Sao Lovers? And I, I have to be honest, I don't think so, because we stopped in 2008 when I was pregnant. Uh, for five months and I said well I just I wanted a break uh, but from the sound blowers maybe because we all I mean Robbie said Tini had his own project and um, Molena it was working for Radio G DJ and they started doing shows as DJ time again with the four DJs um, Gianni Fontana was gone Filippo Carmeni went living in Calabria again you know everybody goes on with his life yeah. so this was a really nice track I loved it but we found out that things had changed, you know, radio stations. If you as a 90 project come out with something new, um, even if they are all happy, you know, they come back, but they don't put it on the radio. There's not, there wasn't enough space. Uh, it, it became very complicated. Is it, they don't believe that a 90s tracking uh, group can come back, even if it was not a 90 track. Mm -hmm. But, you know, then people say, yeah, but we want a 90 track. Or the other ones say, yeah, but this group is 90s and they come back with another track. And uh, it's always complicated. Yeah, exactly. Because nobody's happy, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, we, I was, because it, I really liked it. But I said, if it's all so complicated every time, I was doing my songs already with Kim Lucas, 2007, 2011, 2013, 15, 2020. So I had fun anyway producing mm -hmm. with other people and yeah. other things. That are less complicated. As Natalie Arts yeah, featuring, yeah. I could do house tricks released with Germany. I could do any kind of yeah. thing because yeah. if I went out as a Natalie Arts or not featuring Natalie, I did trance with uh, Karl Fatz. I mean, I could do anything. Yeah. Nobody would say, you know, yeah, they would point finger, your finger like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, besides the sound offers, you were involved in plenty of our project as well. Uh, Eurobeat Girls, Dama, Not and Kim, which is a project from you and Kim Lucas. Uh, Emotions, Night Shadows and Division 2, for example. Plus you did tolls of vocals for other tracks. Do you have a personal favorite track that you did the vocals for? Yeah, many. Uh, you, you named one, Night, Night Shadows. Ma Night Shadows. Uh, there's something about a lot of tracks with Marcello Catalano, recorded in 92, 93, 94. I love them really, but another one, um, I did a song, it was actually a cover, it was with uh, Alessandro Viale and Luca Menzi, I think it was called, let me check, eh? I can check on my phone, there's too many, some were made like in, a, in such a good way, I will come up with, anyway. You go on my YouTube channel in the Featurings playlist and you will find them all. Okay. There are a few that I really, really liked uh, because they were just like very elaborated. I wasn't used to, but really well done. They, uh, that song is where I do, uh, I had to fake as I was, if I were Janet Jackson. Mm -hmm. So my voice is different. Another one I liked very much was Mandy, Magic Moon, produced by Teo Spagna, the brother of Ivana Spagna. Yeah. Very nice. 2000, everybody liked it. Nobody knew it was me because my voice is a bit changed. Um, a lot of a lot of tricks. So I thought, oh, oh, and oh, I had a little problem, of course, because in 98 we had Surrender in the top ones. And on the number two, we had Excel Wonderland, which was me. Oh. <laughs> so a bit of confusion. But a lot of people would not know this because I was always changing my voice. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was a good one too. Excel Wonderland. It was like... You just told me like you did a lot of tracks that you're not really like in the credits. Do, 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 do you have like any idea how many tracks you did vocals for? I still did not find them all back, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, it must be a bit more than 300. Yeah. It's not so much. Huh? Yeah. But uh, they were almost all uh, not covers. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we did some productions 
and but I don't calculate the covers because mm -hmm. uh, the record company would also like ask uh, Nat. Um, Indonesia is asking for a cover of uh, You'll Never Know or uh, Don't Cry For Me Argentina. They would make the music and they would divide, we would divide in three, we would divide the money. Mm -hmm. So that those are like, we call that a job. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of uh, covers, yeah, so, yeah. but um, I'm talking about the, the original songs, like a real original song there. And there are really a lot, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm t I have to be honest. I did uh, usually write the title, but I never knew if the title was going to be changed, and I not always knew if how the name of the artist yeah. would be. And I wasn't always in touch with everybody. Some of them were like, "Ah, not uh, when we see each other, I give you the vinyl, mm -hmm. or I give you a compilation." Yeah, didn't happen. But not always, you know. So how many compilations in Indonesia and the Asia countries? With Avex, um, plus plus you were busy anyway, so yeah, yeah. I lost it. Yeah, yeah. So are there still any people you would like to work with one day, like producers or maybe other? Yes, though, of yeah, course. Yes. But, yes. <laughs> but he will never call me. I hope it would be nice. Breda and Breda together. Yeah. From Sixty from nine from sixty nine. We are both from sixty nine. Yeah. And that would be really nice. I mean, uh, something obviously in the today style, but uh, well. <laughs> There's so many artists. I mean, I, I have so many. I'm not like, uh, I only like this or that. I mm -hmm. just follow any kind of music, yeah. you know, everything from the 70s, 80s, 90s. Uh, I wasn't too much into dance, but that was because there were no musicians behind me. Mm -hmm. But I know I can do my shows with dance music, with musicians. Yeah. So okay. it, it, it's all good now. It's good now. But it would be nice. Tiesto is a good idea. Yeah, okay, good. So, uh, yeah. From everything you did accomplish in your career so far, what are you the most proud of? Oh, yeah. Well, definitely not. Definitely, definitely not. How could you beat? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, for, that's for the Dutch people. That's for the Dutch. It's Pulcino Pio in the Dutch version. That was fun. I had fun adapting the song and singing the song. I had a golden record for it. I did all kinds of interviews because it was Gil Balen who yeah, discovered that I, and that I was the. But actually what he did on the Monday morning, I don't remember the day, but it was February. At eight o'clock he said, if everybody, if anybody knows Natalie Arts, because I'm sure that it is her, because he turned back the, the voice yeah. and he was listening to the pitch and he said, she must be the singer of the Sound Lovers too. So if anybody knows Natalie Arts, we wrote her on Facebook. Uh, anybody who knows her, Call her and tell her I'm looking for her. <laughs> so it was eight o'clock in the morning and my phone was ringing, my house phone was ringing. And I had like a few terrible hours because I couldn't bring my daughter to school. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then actually I had to agree with Sony Holland. But my my most, I mean, the, the thing that I went proud of, who? It's a bit difficult because every, every, sto every song has a story. Mm -hmm. Maybe also the last song I released, Don't You Worry, because I had my daughter. I managed to convince my daughter to dance in the video clip. Oh, that's cool. Because there is this guy in this poor country living a different reality than we are mm -hmm. here in the, you know, in the rich countries. And he's probably living in a war. It doesn't really say in the video where he is, but mm -hmm. you can see he's a poor guy. Mm -hmm. And he has the age of my daughter. And then you jump into a different world where rich people are just living their routine. And she's dancing on the streets, streets, and they have a connection, mm -hmm. those two young people. So I'm I'm rather proud of the last song, probably because we really wanted to give a message to the people. And um, probably because my daughter is dancing yeah, yeah, in the video. Yeah, next, extra special. Extra special. That, that's a good answer. All right, thanks all for your time. And good luck with everything. Thank you. All right, that was it. This week's vlog, my interview with Natalie Arts and the story behind Surrender by the Sound Lovers. Natalie, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below, and very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And I did another interview with Natalie, and that one we talk about the Sound Lovers debut track Runaway, 
and you can already see that interview on my channel so make sure to check it out once again thanks for watching and until next time bye bye